a great day to one and all. Welcome to the September 2023 Licensure Examination for Teachers Let Review for Math Majors. This time, let's discuss items 81 to 100, and I hope you are ready. So be reminded that you have to shade the letter of the correct answer. And if the correct answer is not found among the choices, you have to shade E. So we have to make a slight adjustment to the directions, considering that you are shading now in your answer sheets. So for problem or item number 81, a triangle has vertices at A, 1, negative 1, B, negative 5, negative 3, and C, negative 3, 2. What is the equation of the median to segment AB? Is it A, B, C, or D? All right, and I could see some A's. Let's discuss now the solution. So since we are going to determine the median through BA, it is important that we have to solve first for the midpoint of segment AB. And to get the midpoint of segment AB, we use the formula x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over 2, comma, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 all over 2. And for that, we have negative 5 plus 1 all over 2 for the x. And for the y, negative 3 plus negative 1 all over 2. And this simplifies to negative 2, negative 2. And if you could see here, let's call it point B, which is negative 2, negative 2. But again, the median is passing through vertex C, and it should also pass through point B. And since we have two points here, there are many options for us, but one of them is to utilize the two-point form of a line, which is y minus y sub 1 equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which is your slope here, multiplied by the quantity x minus x sub 1. So by substitution, um, let's say our y sub 1 is negative 2. And this negative 2 here is x sub 1, and negative 2 here is y sub 1. Negative 3 is x sub 2, and 2 here is y sub 2. By substitution, it gives y minus negative 2 equals 2 minus negative 2 all over negative 3 minus negative 2 multiplied by the quantity x minus negative 2. So double negative is positive. So this is simplified into y plus 2. This 2 minus negative 2 becomes 2 plus 2 or 4. Negative 3 minus negative 2 becomes negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1, multiplied by the quantity x plus 2. The 4 over negative 1 simplifies to negative 4. And uh, distributing this negative 4 to this binomial, Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And the y plus 2 was just copied on the left-hand side. And simplifying this by adding negative 2 both sides, y gives y equals negative 4x minus 10 or letter A. So to those who answered A, great start. 82. A triangle has vertices still the same given. But what is now the equation of the altitude to segment AB? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? What do you think is the correct answer here? Okay, so far we have Sir Chad. Now, unlike earlier, we are talking about the median, so we located the midpoint. But this time, when we say altitude, it's the line segment that uh, if you draw a line segment through C, the segment that you should draw, uh, for example, or the line that you will draw here, 
should be perpendicular now to BA. So why from here, let's determine first the slope of line or of segment AB. And by using the formula for slope now, let's say this is x sub 1, this is y sub 1. And 1 negative 1 will be x sub 2 and y sub 2 respectively. And by definition of your slope, by substitution, that gives us m equals negative 1 minus negative 3 all over 1 minus negative 5. And simplifying this gives you a slope of 2 6 or 1 third. However, just like what I said earlier, if you will draw the segment that is uh, passing through C that's perpendicular to it, remember that uh, two lines, uh, I'm talking about non vertical, nor I'm talking about lines that are neither vertical nor horizontal. Two lines are perpendicular if the product of their slopes is negative one or if the slope of one line is the negative reciprocal of the other dipupa. So, ano po yung negative reciprocal ni one-third? Okay, very good. Negative three. In other words po, the slope of the line that is perpendicular to segment AB it has a slope of negative 3. And since you have a slope now of negative 3, and it should pass through the point negative 3, 2, then you can utilize what we call the point-slope form of a line, which is y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. So negative 3 will be our x sub 1, and 2 will be y sub 1. So by substitution, that's y minus 2 equals negative 3 times the quantity x minus negative 3. Minus, mi minus negative 3 becomes x plus 3. Distributing the negative 3 or multiplying negative 3 to x plus 3 gives us negative 3x minus 9. And the left-hand side was just copied. Paul. Adding to both sides... Uh, to solve for y, we have y equals negative 3x minus 7. So if you answered letter C po, congratulations. You got it right. Malinaw po yung ano? Malinaw po, nakuha po natin? Okay, salamat po. 83. What is the equation of the line parallel uh, equation of the line passing through 3 5 and is parallel to 2x plus 3y equals negative 1? Is it A, B, C, or D? All right. Marami po ata or meron po sa atin yung sumagot ng A. Tignan po natin. Actually, marami pong paraan upang isolve ito. And remember, uh, shortcut po yung ginawa ko dito. Since the given line is in standard form po, no? um, two lines are parallel if they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So yung shortcut po dito is simple lang. Kung ano po yung standard form po ito, ha? kung ano po yung left side niya, kopyahin niyo po. So 2x plus 3y. And because they will just differ by a certain constant c. We don't know what that c is yet, so... Let's represent it by C. And since dadaan yung uh, dadaan ito sa 0.35, remember that x here is 3 and the 5 here is y. So by substitution, that becomes 2 times 3 plus 3 times 5 equals C. 2 times 3 is 6 and 3 times 5 po is 15. So 6 plus 15 tells us that your constant is 21. So dahil meron na po tayong value ng C which is 21 here, so yung C na to, dito, ay papalitan po natin ng 21. 
Hence, the line is 2x plus 3y equals 21, letter A. Salamat po. Iba man po yung ginawa yung process, yung mahalaga po ay nakamit po natin o nakuha po natin yung tamang sagot. Salamat po. All right. Let's move on to item number 84 kung wala pong tanong. The point 2, negative 3 is found at the blank where of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. Is it at the interior, at the exterior, on the circumference, or in the center? Okay, so we have uh, people who commented B. And if you answered B, let's see. Remember, if you have um, x squared plus y squared equals 9, um, this is a circle with a center at the point 0, 0. And yung 9 na to, this is actually your r squared. So if r squared is 9, so you just get the positive square root. This tells us that your radius has a length of 3 units. So by graphing, ito po yung itsura niya. No? So yung center natin ay 0, 0. And um, you have here, the point is 2, negative 3, which is here. No? That's why kung inyo pong makikita, this point is actually found outside of your circle. That's why we could say that 2, negative 3 is a point, is an exterior point with respect to x squared plus y squared equals 9, letter B. Thank you. 85. How many point or points of intersection do the three altitudes of a triangle have? Is it 0, 1, 2, or 3? And believe it or not, if you draw the three altitudes, you will actually find out that all three of them will intersect at one point. And that point, exactly one point. And that point is what we call orthocenter. So sure po tayo, only one point lang po yan, letter B. Thank you po, Sir Chad, at sa lahat ng sumagot. No? So orthocenter po yan. So sure po ha, kahit anong triangle po, iisang point lang po yung... Uh, kanilang uh, sa isa-isang point lang sila mag-i-intersect lahat. 86. The centroid of a triangle is the intersection of the three lines of a triangle. Is it altitudes, angle by sectors, medians, or perpendicular by sectors? Okay. Marami po sa atin ang sumagot ng C. And if you answered C, you are actually correct po. Bakit? Yung intersection ng tatlong perpendicular bisector ay tinatawag nating circumcenter. Yung intersection naman ng tatlong angle bisectors ay tinatawag nating in-center. The, in the intersection of the three medians is what we call the centroid. And the intersection um, of the three altitudes is, is called orthocenter as what we have mentioned earlier. So letter C po, ang tama sagot. I hope you got it po. All right. So far so good. 87. For what value of x will make 3, 5, 5 ninths and x 21 collinear? Is it 12 over 25, 9 halves, 13 halves, or 18 over 25? Okay. Okay. Okay, may sumagot ng E. Okay, sabi daw ni Ma'am Nurse Usman, 11 daw dapat. Then, yun din yung sabi ni Sir Chat. And let's see kung tama pa kayo. Tandaan po natin, if three points are collinear, then any pairs of slopes should be any pairs of slopes should all be equal to one another. So yung ginawa ko po dito is, kinuha ko po yung slope ng first two points. 
So, and substituting it to the slope formula, we have 9 minus 5 all over 5 minus 3 equals. Yung sunod ko naman pong kinuha ay yung slope ng second at saka third point, which is 21 minus 9 all over x minus 5. Yan po yun, yun dito. Take note, kung kinuha po ninyo yung slope ng first at saka third, okay din po yan. In my case, I just got, I just solved for the two slopes and equated them. Tama po. Simplifying the left side po, no? So 9 minus 5 is 4, 5 minus 3 is 2. The right-hand side simplifies to 12 over x minus 5. 4 over 2 here is just 2. And the rest were just copied. By the multiplication property of equality, I multiply both sides by x minus 5. And that gives us 2x minus 10 equals 12. Because 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And it's understood that the denominator here is 1. No? And 1 times 12 is 12. So, um, adding both sides by 10 gives us 2x equals 22. And dividing both sides by 2 gives us x equals 11. And 11 is not one of the choices. So as mentioned in the directions, letter E. Exactly also. Thank you po, Ma'am Nurse Usman. Pwede rin po yan. No? So yung area ng triangle mo dapat zero. Tama din po. Then siguro yung iba sa atin, ginamit nila yung matrix formula. Tama naman po yun. And equated the area to zero. 88. What's your answer here? Suppose X is an acute angle in degrees of a right triangle. Which of the following defines sine X? Is it opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, or hypotenuse over opposite? Wow. Marami po ata sa atin ang convince sa letter A. Let's see kung tama kayo. If you answered A, A di wow, that is actually correct. Because di ba, so katoa. So sine is opposite O, OH, opposite over hypotenuse. Ano naman po yung B? Adjacent over hypotenuse, yan ay cosine X. Yung third naman po na opposite over adjacent, toa, yan po ay definition ng tangent X. And lastly, hypotenuse over opposite, it's cosecant x. So sa lahat ng sumagot ng A, tama po kayo. Congratulations. Sunod. 89. In a right triangle, if cosine x equals 4 fifths, what is the value of secant x? Did you go for four-fifths, three-fifths, four-thirds, or five-fourths? Wow! Marami po sa ata at sa atin ang convince sa letter D. Okay? And if you answer D, I'm proud of you. Bakit? Remember po natin that secant x and cosine x are reciprocals of each other, provided po ha, na in this case, um, they are both defined. And I agree with you also na it's one of the reciprocal identities. So if cosine x is 4 fifths, thus secant x has to be 5 fourths, letter D. Tandaan po natin, ang um, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another. Yung tangent ay reciprocal ng cotangent. Yung cosine ay and secant are reciprocals of one another as well. So letter D, ang tamang sagot. Good job. 90. In a right triangle, if cosine theta equals 12 thirteenths, what is tangent theta? Did you go for 13 twelfths, 5 thirteenths, 13 fifths, or 5 twelfths? Okay. Many ata, no? Siguro yung marami po sa atin ang convince sa letter D. Tignan po natin. 
So by if this is your theta, no, according to the problem, cosine theta and cosine is defined as the ratio of the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So your if this is your acute angle theta, adjacent sa kanya ay 12, yung hypotenuse niya ay 13. And let's call this one, uh, we don't know this yet, no? So this is the opposite with respect to your theta. Um, believe it or not, it's... So if we will solve for the missing side, we will utilize the Pythagorean theorem, no? And that is 12 squared plus P squared equals the square of your hypotenuse, which is 13 squared. And that becomes 144 plus P squared equals 169. So subtracting both sides by 144 gives P squared equals 25. Let's just get the positive square root of uh, 25. So P is 5. We will neglect negative 5 uh, because we are not talking about the partition plane here. And the missing side has to be positive. So that's five. Remember that tangent, we are looking for tangent theta, which is opposite over the adjacent. That's why that's opposite five over 12, letter D. Tama. Good job, Paul. Okay, next number. In what quadrant or quadrants is sine positive? Did you go for one only? Two, one and two only. One and four or two and four. All right. Very, okay, one and two daw. Yung sabi ng karamihan sa atin. Now, let's see if you got it. Tandaan po natin ito. Sine is positive in quadrants where the sign of the ordinate, sorry, okay. sign is positive in quadrants where the sign of the ordinate or the y coordinate is positive. Po. And tandaan po natin, yung y coordinate natin ay positive in the first and second quadrants. And it is uh, negative in the third and fourth quadrant. So sure po tayo that sign is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Letter B. Tandaan po natin. Sign is positive where Y is positive. For cosine naman po, cosine is positive where X is positive. So surely, kung yung tanong is at what quadrants is cosine positive, so that would be quadrant 1 and 4. And it's negative for the rest of the quadrant. So tama po, letter B. If the point 1, 3, comma Y lies on the point circle, what should be a possible value of Y? Is it 2 thirds? 3 squared of 2 over 3. 2 squared of 2 over 3. 2 squared of 3 over 3. Okay, we see a lot of C's. Grabe, tingnan natin. Parang unanimous yata tayo. Okay. Tandaan po natin. Kapag sinabi po natin point circle, it is a circle with um uh it is a circle po no um with a radius of 1. I think meron po akong mali dito. Hindi ko po specify kung saan po kung saan yung ating uh, center. So sige, bonus po ito ngayon. <laughs> Sandit lang po ha. Bonus po ito. But let us suppose, suppose po natin muna that it is, that the center is in the origin. If the center is in the origin, uh, so it will be x squared plus y squared equals 1. No? And of course, you will substitute that x by one third. So one third quality squared equals uh, plus y squared equals one squared or still one. And that's one ninth plus y squared equals one. Tapos, 
I subtracted both sides by 1 9 and uh, y squared is equal to 8 9. Taking the so if we take the no no if we take the square root of both sides that would be y equals plus minus the square root of eight ninths. And if you will use your calculator, you will actually get uh, the square root of eight is two square root of two, and the square root of nine is three. So y could be plus minus two square root of two all over three. Hence, we choose. Y equals 2 square root of 2 over 3 because it's one of the choices. But for now, um, we will treat this as bonus considering I did not specify the center at 0, 0. Salamat po. 93. Okay. Okay. In what quadrant is cosine theta greater than 0? and sine theta less than zero. Is it one, two, three, or four? Tandaan po natin that cosine is positive. Cosine theta greater than zero means that your x is positive. And sine theta less than zero implies that your y is negative. Tandaan po natin yan. Okay? And we could see Na positive si x at negative si y. That's why the coordinates is positive negative, which is you can see if you could see here is actually found in quadrant four, letter D. I hope na po natin. Ninety four. If sine theta equals four fifths and theta is within 0 and pi over 2, ibig sabihin po niyan, nasa first quadrant po siya. Then cosine 2 theta is equal to which of A, B, C, or D? Okay, C ata yung sagot ninyo. Tingnan po natin. Um, kung nasa first quadrant po siya, by the, sabi dito, no? so uh, sine theta equals 4 fifths, so yung opposite mo ay 4 and 5 po ito. No? So yung inyong hypotenuse. And x has to be positive kasi ganyan po yun sa first quadrant. No? So iba ata yung naiproject ko but don't worry. Same pa rin po. By the Pythagorean theorem, makikita po natin that x squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Or solving for x it actually gives you x equals 3. Let's adapt na lang po yung positive um, since uh, all coordinates in the first quadrant are positive. My apologies po, mali po yung triangle ko, pero uh, nasa first quadrant po siya. Sana nailagay ko sana yung, ano, no, yung uh, partition plane. Pasensya na po. But don't worry, the concept here will still be the same. It's just that the figure is uh, misleading. Sorry for that. So if sine theta is 4 fifths, it follows that cosine theta is 3 fifths. Kasi nga 3 ito eh. And cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So marami kong paraan upang isolve ito. And that is, we can use one of the identities, one of the double angle identities, which is sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine uh, theta. Sabit lang po, ha? Sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay? Then, um, by substitution, that's equal to 2 times 4 fifths times 3 fifths here po. And multiplying them gives us 24 over 25. Letter A. All right. I hope na nakuha po natin. My apologies for the inadvert inadvertent uh for my errors. The question is asking for cosine to theta, not sine to theta. Okay? And one of the identities for cosine to theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. 
So by substitution po, that would be uh, the square of three fifths minus the square of four fifths, which when simplified is negative seven over 25 letter C. Thank you po. 95. Which of the following is equal to tangent of pi over 10? Okay, so may sumagot ng letter C. So what others do is that merong calculator naman. So whatever um, value, you check no, kung di po ninyo alam. So check po ninyo kung saan dito yung may parehas na answer. But actually po, we know that uh, we have the identity tangent of theta over 2 is equal to sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta or pwede rin pong 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. It's one of our identities. And if we let theta to be pi over 5 and dividing both sides by 2 no, to get theta over 2, pi over 5 divided by 2 means pi gives us theta over 2 equals theta equals pi over 10, I mean. And by substitution uh, to this formula here, I chose this one. That's tangent of pi over 10 equals sine of pi over 5 all over 1 plus cosine of pi over 5, letter C. Okay, good job. So kung hindi po natin alam, so try nyo pong mag-trial and error. At kung saan dyan yung magkaparehong sagot, most likely yan po yung tamang sagot. 96. What is the reference angle of 120 degrees? Is it 60? Negative 30? Nagdumable ating negative 30 or negative 60? Okay. Letter A. So when we say reference angle po, no, um, it is uh, the smallest positive acute angle that is made uh, by the terminal side of an angle with respect to the x-axis. So kung ito po yung 120 degrees natin, it's an angle in standard uh, position. No? So yung terminal side po niya ay nandito. If, because if an angle is positive, it should be rotated counterclockwise. If the, if the angle is negative, it should be rotated clockwise. That's why dahil positive 120, it should be rotated counterclockwise. And there here is the terminal side. Remember, this is a straight line. And of course, this has to be 180, right? That's why if this is 120, then 180 minus 120 gives you 60 degrees as the reference angle, letter A. All right. So far, so good. 97. What are the coordinates of 60 degrees on a unit circle? Uh, for this one, it is implied na yung center po natin ay nasa origin po muna. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Okay, many answered D. And if you answered D, you are actually correct. So when we say unit circle, it is a, it is a circle with a radius of 1 po, no? At dahil nandito po si 60 degrees, if you wish, um, this is your guide here. And it has coordinates of 1 half yung x at saka square root of 3 over 2 yung y. If you wish po, you could derive this using the concept of the 30, 60, 90 uh, right triangle. Letter D. Very good. 98. How long is the arc subtended by a 135 degree angle if the circle has a radius of 8 cm? Use pi plus 0.14. So we are looking here for what we call arc length. And to determine arc length, po, so um, we have actually the formula. L equals theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi r, where uh, the L here is the length of the arc subtended by an angle. Theta is an angle in degrees, 
and r is the radius of your circle, and pi is approximately 3.14. So by substitution, L equals 135 degrees over 360 degrees times 2 times 3.14 times HCM, and your calculators can do the rest. So the value or the arc length is 18.84 centimeters. Letter C. All right. 99. A tree casts a shadow of 5 meters long. If the angle of elevation from the end of the shadow to the top is 60 degrees, how tall is the tree? Is it 2.5 meters, 5 meters, 5 square root of 3 meters, or 10 meters? Oh, sorry, it should be meters rather. All right. All right. Wow, letter C. Let's see. So this is how the figure looks like. So halimbawa, ito po yung kamay kahoy po dito, yung tree. At saka ito po yung 60 degrees na angle of elevation sa top ng tree. So the distance mo dito no, is 5. And from here, you could actually see that x, with respect to your 60 degrees, x is opposite and 5 is adjacent. So therefore, we will we can use the tangent function. So tangent 60 degrees equals opposite na x, all over 5 na adjacent. And remember, multiplying both sides by 5 to clear of fractions, that gives 5 tangent 60 degrees equals x. But we know that tangent 60 degrees is square root of 3, and by substitution, the height of this tree, which is x, is 5 square root of 3 meters, letter C. And for 100, which of the following is equal to tangent of 15 degrees? Did you go for letter A, B, C, or D? All right, we have... Three people at least, no, who comment who answered letter C. And if you answered C, okay. According to Sir Chad, meron po tayong tinatawag na co-function relation, and I do agree with that po. Why? We have the co-function relation that states the value of a trigonometric function of an acute angle in degrees is equal to the co-function of its complement. So yung co-function po ng tangent ay cotangent. At saka yung complement naman po ng 15, di ba? Kapag sinabi nating complement, uh, their sum is 90. So 90 minus 15 gives you 75. That is why tangent 15 degrees is equal to cotangent of 75 degrees, which is letter C. I hope na nakuha po natin. And with that, thank you very much. That's the first 20 items. At this juncture, we will now discuss items 101 to 120. And we also have the same instructions as earlier. 101. What is the range of y equals 4 sine x? Did you go for letter A? B, C, or D? Okay. If you answered D, you are actually correct. Take note po na yung letter A na negative infinity to infinity, ito po yung domain ng sine function. And if you could see here po, no, yung pinaka, yung Y, yung, um, the lowest y value ay nasa negative 4 at ito po ay part ng set. At saka yung highest peak po niya ay when y is equal to 4. That's why yung letter C po kasi hindi kasama si negative 4 at saka si 4. Pero kasama po siya dapat as part ng range. Therefore, we go for letter 
D. At saka tama po yan, we should choose a closed interval. Letter C is an open interval. Kapag sinabi po nating uh, open interval, yung like this, no? yung dalawang endpoints ay hindi kasama. Pero yung closed interval po dapat. Eh. So letter D, meaning kasama si negative 4 at saka si positive 4 po natin. D. Next number. Simplify sine to the fourth x minus cosine to the fourth of x. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Okay. Actually, sine to the fourth of x is a perfect square. Cosine to the fourth of x is also a perfect square. And since the sine po sa gitna ay minus, this is in fact a difference of two squares, no? which is factorable, di ba? If you have a squared minus b squared, that means a minus b times the quantity a plus b. That's why this becomes sine squared x minus cosine squared x multiplied by sine squared x plus cosine squared x by using the factoring technique related to the difference of two squares. Pero tandaan po natin, mga moms and sirs, ha? we have the Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. That's why we will replace the sine squared x and cosine squared x with 1. This will be 1, which means... Any number, remember, that multiplied by 1 is equal to the itself. So the correct answer here is sine squared x minus cosine squared x, which is letter A. Okay, how about the, this one? Which of the following is the equivalent of sine of the quantity alpha plus beta plus minus beta? Okay, I hope that you could still remember your identities related to this now. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Letter A. Actually, A is correct. Tandaan po natin, ha? If you have the sign of the quantity A plus minus beta, Para hindi po kayo mawala, sin cos cosin. Sin cos cosin. Pero tapos yung alpha beta, same po yung sequence niya. At saka yung sign sa gitna ay pinafollow po natin. Kung plus, plus din po. Kung minus, minus. In fact, yung letter D naman po, na cos cos sin sin, ito naman po, uh, tsapa minus plus, ito naman po ay for cosine plus minus. Uh, a cosine of quantity alpha plus minus beta. Kung plus, minus dito sa gitna. Kung cosine A minus B, plus yung sa gitna. Magkabalikan po sila. So letter A po, yung tamang sagot. Okay, so far, so good. 104. Which of the following is equal to sine of the quantity 90 degrees minus theta if theta is a positive acute angle, did you go for A, B, C, or D? So, tingnan ko natin yung sagot nyo. All right. Some of us answered A, which is cosine theta. Actually, there are many ways of doing this. And my way, and uh, the way I did, I used the identity if you have sine of the quantity alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta dahil minus, dapat minus din po yan. Sin cos, cosine. Tapos yung alpha beta is in the same order pa rin. And if alpha is 90 degrees, and beta is theta, by substitution po, it becomes sine of the quantity 90 degrees minus theta is equal to sine 90 degrees times cosine theta minus cosine 90 degrees times sine theta. 
Pero tandaan po natin, ha? we don't know yet what theta is, but we know that sine 90 degrees is 1. Cosine 90 degrees is 0. That's why sa part na ito po, yung 1 times cosine theta ay magiging cosine theta. Si 0 minus sine theta will become 0 because any number multiplied by 0 is 0. Hindi po ba? That's why yung natira po is sine of the quantity 90 degrees minus theta is just cosine theta. Letter A. So far, we have at least two people, Sir Chad and Sir Jomar, and we have Mom Nurse Usman. So at least three of you got the item right. Okay. Nakuha po natin. It's important po kasi no, that we know the uh, identities in order for us to answer uh, questions like this. Siguro yung iba po sa atin, iba yung way ng pag-solve. Okay po yan. No problem po. Basta yung mahalaga, nakuha po natin yung tamang sagot. Okay. 105. The following are measures of central tendency. Exact. Did you go for mean? Median or mo? Or standard deviation? Okay, tama. Bakit standard deviation? Mean, median, and mode are measures of central tendency, but standard deviation is a measure of dispersion, a measure of variation, or a measure of spread. Uyan. So letter D. So that's why, tandaan po natin also, no? if the measure, um, if you have two or more group, the one with a lower standard deviation uh, is more homogeneous than the other. No? Or, yung scores niya ay magkalapit kung, kung iyahang din sa ibang grupo. Next, number 106. What's the median of 9, 8, 7, 8, 8, 4, 9, 5, and 10? Okay, so we have there. I could see 6. Okay, malahin ko sa atin ang convent sa letter B, which is 8. Pero take note po, Kung inyo pong mapapansin, di ba, anong unang gawin natin? What should we do first for us to determine the median? Can we solve the median this way? Or meron po tayong dapat gawin? Tama. We have to express it first as an array or we have to arrange it from lowest to highest. So if we will arrange this set of numbers from lowest to highest, we will have your array, which is 4, 5, 7, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10. Ang tanong, di ba, meron, ilang scores ba meron tayo? Meron tayong 9 na scores. So, ikailang score ang media natin? Ikailang siya? According to Sir Chad, it's the middle number. Okay. According and men, in your answers, I actually believe you, it is the fifth number from the left. One, two, three, four, five. So it follows that the fifth number, which is eight, or the fifth score, which is eight, is our median letter B. Okay. Moving on, this refers to the most appearing score or number in a certain data. Is it the mean, median, mode, or standard deviation? Okay, I think many of you got this. And take note po natin, ha? mean is what we call the arithmetic average. You get this, uh, if you have raw data, you could get this by adding all of the scores and dividing the sum by the number of scores. Median divides the data set into two parts. The mode is the score that appears the most number of times or has the highest frequency. No? And standard deviation naman po is the most useful measure of dispersion. So letter C. Okay. 
100A in a certain group, 10 students got the following scores in a 10-item quiz. 4, 5, 8, 7, 10, 10, 4, 8, 8, 3. Find the range of the scores. Is it 3, 6, 7, or 10? It seems to me, marami sa atin ang convinced sa letter C. Ang tanong, pakilagay po sa chat, ano nga po pa? Paano po ba natin kinukuha yung range? Very good. According to Ma'am Nurse Usman and Ma'am Jeline, to Ma'am Ayesa, to Sir Chad, to Ma'am Mary, to Sir Jason, it's the highest score minus the lowest score. So the highest score here is 10, the lowest score is 3, and your range is indeed C, 7. And what does the range tell us here? It is actually telling us that the distance between any two scores in this set will never be more than 7 points. O yung pinakamalayong distance, no? o yung distance ng kahit anong two numbers dyan, will ay hindi po lalagpas sa ating range na 7 uh, points or 7 units. 109. Thank you po, Sir Jason, to Ma'am Antonette as well. 109. Which of the following situations best exhibit a normal distribution of data? Is it A, most of the students got perfect in an exam? B, half of teacher and the students are average and the rest are exceptional? C, all of the students in Sir J's class got failing marks? Or letter D, in Sir Kim's test, very few students failed, majority of the students got good scores, and very few got exceptionally high scores. Okay, let's discuss them. Letter A, most of the students got perfect in an exam. This is actually telling us that majority got high and only few got low. This is an example of what we call a negatively skewed or skewed to the left na data set. Sa negative dispute naman po na data set, karamihan sa mga scores or mga numbers ay matataas. Half of teachers and students are average, while the rest are exceptional. Um, hindi po. All of the students in Sir J's class got failing marks. So most likely, positive dispute ito dahil marami sa kanila ay nakakuha ng failing marks. In positive dispute data, um, most of the scores or the numbers are low. No? And letter D naman is the best answer here. In a normal distribution of data, we are expecting a more or less a balanced distribution, a symmetric, symmetrical distribution. It's something that's balanced, okay, with respect to your... And in a, a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all equal to one another. Dog. 110. Mr. Liao Deres, placed at the 90th percentile rank in the civil service exam or CSE. What does this mean? Is it A, Mr. Liao Deres, less than 90% of the examinees in the CSE? B, Mr. Liao Deres got 90 out of 100 in the CSE? C, Mr. Liao Deres' rating is 90% in that exam. Or D, Mr. Liao Deres is a top notcher since he got 90% of all the items. Wow. Marami po yung sumagot ng A. And if you answered A, you are actually correct. This is the best interpretation for percentile. So sa percentile kasi kapag sinabi mong 90%, 90th percentile, yung score mo ay mas mataas sa 90%, no? Sa lahat ng kumuha ng test na yan. And roughly around 10% ata yung mas mataas yung kuha kaysa sa'yo. Percentile is an example of a measure of position. Letter B naman po is just a raw score. Okay? Raw score. 90 uh, out of uh, 100. 
Yung letter C naman, we cannot say this um, because for you to determine the rating, you should know the perfect score and uh, yung score mo out of that perfect score. And also, meron din tayong conversion factor. So, yeah. So, hindi ito yung best answer. Letter D, it doesn't mean na kapag 90% yung nakuha mo, not yet percentile rank ka, top nature ka. It's not. Um, letter A po, yung tamang sagot. 110. A certain university has eight gates. In how many ways can one enter and exit the said university using any gate? Did you go for 16, 56, 64, or 40,320? Tingin niyo po. Okay. Letter C, 64. May sumagot ng D. Okay. So, hati ata tayo. Or di tayo unanimous this time. No? Some C, some D. All right. Now, tandaan po natin ito. One can enter in any of the gates, in any of the eight gates. In other words, there are eight options for one to enter. Sabi sa problem, anyone could enter in exit in any of the gates. So kung pwede kang pumasok in eight ways, one can also exit in any of the eight gates, right? And take note that according to the fundamental counting principle, if one event can occur in eight ways and the other event can occur in eight ways, then there are eight times eight or 64 ways one can enter and exit in the said university using any gate. So tamang sagot po ay letter C. I hope na nakuha po natin. Dalawang slots lang po yung meron tayo. Entrance, yung first slot. Exit, yung second slot. That's why first slot, eight ways. Second slot, eight ways. That's why eight times eight po, 64. Careful po. May tanong po about sa 111? Okay, wala naman. Dumako po tayo sa 112. In how many ways can five of the eight people occupy the five vacant chairs? Is it 40, 56, 336, or 6,720? Okay. Does this involve permutation or combination? Very good. This involves permutation po. Why? Because order matters here. No? Be careful po. So it's permutation. That's why dahil merong eight na tao, pero lima lang yung kukunin mo upang umupo, then that is using this time. No? It involves the permutation formula, uh, particularly the linear permutation formula, which is NPR equals n factorial all over n minus r quantity factorial. So with that, that would be our n is 8 and our r is 5. Tandaan po natin na yung r po natin is always less than or equal to your n. Okay? That's why 8p5 po. So para hindi po tayo makonfuse. So 8p5 is equal to 8 factorial all over 8 minus 5 quantity factorial. And um, your denominator is 3 factorial. If you wish to use the, the usual manual way, if you wish, the 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. I stop with 3 factorial because I know that I could cancel it or divide it with the other 3 factorial sa denominator. So what will be left is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 
which is 6,720. Letter D. Tama nga po. Letter D. Okay. May katanungan po tayo? Um, wala naman? Okay. Thank you po. So this one na is permutation po. All right. One thirty. There are nine points in a plane where no two points are collinear. Sorry, no three points rather are collinear. Correction. There are nine points in a plane where no three points are collinear. Meaning to say, walang three points are contained in one straight line. How many triangles can be formed? Did you go for 84, 168, 178, or 504? Okay. Does this involve permutation or combination? Kasi gagawa ka na ng triangle ngayon eh. Okay, I do agree with Sir Chad, no? That this one now involves combination. Why? Because order does not matter as long as they are part of your of the vertices of your triangle. And with that, since there are nine points, at upang makagawa ng triangle, kailangan mo ng tatlong points. So we will use the combination formula, NCR equals N factorial all over N minus R quantity factorial times R factorial. So your N is 9 and your C is 3. That's why it becomes 9 factorial all over 9 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. And if you use your calculator spoon, no? it actually gives you 84. Letter A nga po. Good job. All right, so far, so good. Next number. In how many ways can Maria, together with her five other friends, be seated around a circular table? Is it 20, 24, 120, or 720? Okay, so unanimous so far na letter C? Mm -hmm. Ang tanong po, Ano, di ba, ito ngayon eh. Order matters here right now, di ba? So, ano po, at saka sabi dito, circular table. So, anong formula po yung gagawin natin? Or yung gagamitin natin? Anyone po? Okay. I do agree with Sir Jerome, which is the formula for Sir and Ma'am Ayesa, which is the formula for circular permutation. At ano po yung formula for circular permutation? Anyone who could uh, type in? Very good. Sir Chad, thank you po. If n represents the total number of objects, then it's just n minus 1 quantity factorial. Tandaan po natin ha, n minus 1 quantity factorial. So, ang tanong po, ano, ano yung n natin dito? What is the value of n here? All right, n is 6. Very good. Because si Maria... At saka yung kanyang limang friends. So, Maria is 1. 1 plus 5, 6. So, since n is 6, so that will be 6 minus 1 quantity factorial, which is 5 factorial, which means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Because if you take the factorial of, an, of a whole number, then you will, go, you will be multiplying all whole numbers from that number all the way until 1 which gives us 120 letter C. All right. So far, so good. Tama. 115. 
how many three-digit odd numbers can be formed from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9 if repetition is allowed? A, 192. B, 320. C, 512. Or D, 1,024. Okay, may sumagot ng B. May sumagot ng C. Sino ang tama? Okay. Take note po ha, na meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 na digits lang. Hindi po kasama si 0 at saka si 6. Therefore, sabi kasi sa problem, di ba? Odd numbers. Three-digit odd numbers. So meron po tayong slot. Tatlong slots. The slot for the hundreds, slot for the tens, and slot for the ones. Take note that any of these digits could serve as hundreds digit. That's why walo po. At dahil repetition is allowed, Ano mang digit po yung ginamit ninyo uh, sa first sa hundreds place, ay pwede din gamitin sa tens place. That's why walo din po yan pwede. Pero bakit five lang ito? Dahil an odd number ends with either one, three, five, with any of one, three, five, seven, and nine. So lima po sila. One, two, three, Four, five. That's why meron pong five sa one slot. And by the fundamental counting principle, we have to multiply eight, eight and five to get 320, letter B. All right. I hope na nakuha po natin. Next number. Take note po ha, kung may tanong po kayo, Huwag pong mahiyang magtanong, maglagay sa chat kung may tanong po tayo, okay? I will be more than willing to help you po. Next, the probability that event A occurs is 0.24 and for event B to occur is 0 0.34 and the intersection of A and B is a null set, meaning wala po silang intersection. What is the probability of A union B? Is it, oh, okay, marami pong sumagot ng C. Si Sir Chad, si Sir Jason, si Ma'am Mayesa, si Sir Jerome. Okay. Si Ma'am Usman din. Okay. Tandaan po natin, meron po tayong formulang ganito. That is, the probability of the union of two events is equal to the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event minus the probability of their intersection. minus the probability of their intersection. And according po sa ating problem, yung probability ni A ay 0.24, yung probability ni B ay 0.34. Pero sabi kasi no, sa kanila, yung intersection ni A at saka ni B ay null set. Ibig sabihin po yan, wala po silang common. That's why zero po yung probability nila. That's why 0.24 plus 0.34 minus 0 is 0.58, letter C. Sa so lahat ng sumagot ng C, great job po. But if not, it's a learning experience for everyone. Okay. 117. A class is surveyed if they like cats, dogs, or both. 40% like dogs, that the person likes cats is 30%, and that they like cats and dogs is 27%. What is the probability that they like cats or dogs only? Is it 17%, 37%, 43%, or 97%? Marami pa rin po ata yung convince sa letter C. And take note po ha, ito po yung gagamitin natin. 
it's similar to the previous item. Tandaan po natin na yung union represents or. At saka yung intersection represents end. That's why um, the previous item in 116 earlier, pwede din ganito yung form niya. Pinalitan lang natin yung union ng or at saka yung intersection ay pinalitan po natin ng end. D here stands for dogs. The C here stands for cats. So the probability that a person likes dogs or cats is equal to the probability of one liking dogs plus the probability of one liking cats minus the probability of liking dogs and cats. Minus the probability of dogs and cats. And by substitution po sa problem natin, the probability that one likes dogs or cats is 40% plus 30% minus 27%, which simplifies to 43% letter C. That's why yes po, Mang Ayesat. Correct po. N is for intersection or is for union. Thank you po. 118. There are five red, seven yellow, and four green marbles in a bag. What are the odds in getting a yellow marble? Okay, I could see seven is to nine. I could see also letter uh, the seven is to 16. Hati po ata tayo, may A at saka C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let us define odds. Kapag sinabi po natin odds of an event, it is the ratio of favorable outcomes to unfavorable outcomes. The ratio, kung favorable sa kanya, success. Sa ibang books ko, ha, success yung term nila. Kung unfavorable sa kanya, ang term is failure. Now, yung tanong ko po, ilan po yung pabor para sa yellow? Merong five red, seven yellow, and four green. Okay, tama. Seven po ang pabor sa yellow. Pag sinabi po natin hindi pabor, meaning hindi yellow. So, ilan po ang hindi pabor sa yellow? So, ang hindi pabor sa yellow ay nine. Tama po. And the ratio, again, it's favorable to unfavorable or success to failure. And that is seven yung favorable at saka 9 yung hindi favorable. Limang red, at saka 4 na green. Hence, the correct answer is 7 is to 9, letter A. I hope na nakuha po natin. Okay, yes, Sir Chad, tama po yan. Seven, um, pero yung, yung na-present ko po ngayon, yung parang shorter version niya po. But yours also got the same correct answer. Thank you po, Sir Chad. 119. The probability it will that it will rain today is 0.45. And, uh, the, and that I will bring an umbrella is 0.30. What is the probability that it will not rain today? And I will not bring an umbrella. Is it 0.135, B, 0.165, C, 0.315, or D, 0.385? Okay, may A, may question mark. <laughs> Mayroon ding D. So A at saka D ata, yung sagot natin. Now, take note po ha, by the uh, complementary rule of probabilities, if the probability that it will rain today is 0.45, then the, but the probability that it will not rain will be from sub 1, minus the probability it will rain. So 1 minus 0. 0.45, it's 0. 0.55. Hence, the probability that it will not rain is 55 uh, hundredths. 
also in a similar manner, the probability that one brings an umbrella is 0.30. Therefore, by the complementary rule of probabilities, the probability that one will not bring an umbrella will be 1 minus 0.30 or 7 times. And take note po, ah, it says probability that it will not rain and I will bring an umbrella. And end represents intersection. And tandaan po natin that the probability of A union B is equal to the product of, of the probability of A times the probability of B. I let A to be the probability that it will not rain. And I let B to be the probability that it will, that you will not bring an umbrella. And by using this rule, the probability that it will not rain and I will not bring an umbrella is equal to the probability that it will not rain and the probability times the probability that I will not bring an umbrella. So I'll just multiply 0 0.55 and 0 0.70, which is 0 0.385, letter D. Okay. Or iba man po yung process na ginawa ninyo, uh, it's okay. No problem with that. So I could see here, no? Um, 0 0.55 times 0 0.7, yeah, yan po yung ginawa ko. Yung kay Sir Jerome, na-try nyo po kung parehas po yung sagot nyo. 0 0.45 plus 0 0.30 minus 0 0.45 uh, times 0 0.30. I believe tama po yan, uh, Sir Jerome. Check lang. So far, so good. Yes. Thank you po. By the way, Sir Jerome, is your answer letter D din po? Let me see. Okay, tama po. So, yan po yung kinagandahan ng math. Iba-iba man po yung process natin. Pwede po tayong uh, makakarating sa same na paroroonan. Okay, good job po. Yes po, I agree with that, Sir Chan, as well. And then yung ginamit ni Sir Jerome ay yung rule natin kanina na the probability of A union B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of their intersection. Good job po. Thank you. 120. This refers to the type of probability that is based on previous occurrences. Is it theoretical, classical, experimental, or exploratory? All right. Ano po yung sagot ninyo? Based on previous occurrences. D, mm -hmm. C. The correct answer here is letter Okay, B. Um, to those who answered A or B, I'm sorry, it is wrong. Um, it is not po. Why? Kapag sinabi po natin theoretical or classical probability, yan po yung usual concept natin na total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay? The correct answer here is experimental probability, letter C. In experimental probability, halimbawa ko ganito. Nag-toss ka ng coin. Sa unang toss mo, heads. Sa ikalawang toss mo, heads. Sa ikatatlong toss mo, head. Ikaapat na toss mo, uh, tail. For example, something like that. No? Out of 10 tosses, halimbawa, out of 10 tosses, um, 7 heads yung lumabas, at saka tatlong tails yung lumabas. So sa next mo na toss, you will have a probability of say, something like 7 over 10 na heads yung lalabas at saka 3 over 10 yung hindi siya lalabas. Kasi yung experimental probability, nag experiment ka, no? like for example, rolling a die, tossing a coin, pa, something like that. At saka, yung hugot, sa, ano, yung hugot sa experimental probability ay your future occurrence can be predicted using past occurrences. Yung past namin makakapredict ng future ay joke lang po. And that concludes our discussion for tonight. Thank you very much and a great day to one and all.